But first to the political and media news tonight, and there's a lot of it. You may have noticed the remarkable similarities between the Democratic Party's daily talking points and a lot of the political coverage you see from news outlets. Often these two things are identical. Even the fabled Rockettes at Radio City Music Hall are not as in sync. Everyone in this media political chorus line is putting on precisely the same performance. Consider the question of angry left-wing mobs. They seem to be everywhere all of a sudden in this formerly placid country. They're yelling at Republicans in restaurants and airports. They're pounding on the front doors of the Supreme Court. They're blocking intersections, threatening passers-by on the street. This is the youth wing of the Democratic Party. Yet the Democratic Party's position is they do not exist. There are no mobs. Ignore your lying eyes. Well, not surprisingly, the media are suddenly saying exactly the same thing. Watch this Orwellian exchange from CNN yesterday. When you see people like Ted Cruz getting chased out of restaurants by a mob. Oh, when you see, you're when not you, going to use the mob I will, word Oh, it's, it's totally a mob. It is without a there's doubt. Mats, I mean, it's, it's, uh, there's no other word mats. for it. It's a go watch it. Put up a the mob, video. Ted. Stop. Stop. So a mob is not actually a mob because the word mob is not allowed on television anymore. But wait, aren't journalists supposed to be the champions of clear language? Well, not when euphemism better serves their political goals. If banning words is what it takes to help the Democratic Party, they're happy to do it. Not surprisingly, CNN did that very same segment again later in the day, repetition being the heart of propaganda. Watch it again. Is it mob behavior? No, it's not mob behavior. Thank you. It's people who are no, upset and they're angry not. with the way the, the way the country is going and the policies. In the Constitution, you can protest whenever and wherever you want. It doesn't tell you that yes. you can't do it at a restaurant. It doesn't tell you that you can't do it on a football field. It doesn't tell you that you can't do it uh, on a cable news show. You can do it wherever you want. And to call people mobs because they are exercising their constitutional right is just beyond the pale. Did you hear that? What happened to Ted Cruz is not mob behavior. And by the way, it's, quote, beyond the pale for you to suggest otherwise. What happened to Cruz wasn't so different from those love-ins you've seen in the documentaries about the 1960s. Doe-eyed women in Indian print dresses passing out flowers to soldiers. In case you've forgotten, we have the Cruz tape. Watch. Okay, it wasn't quite as restrained or calm as we remembered. So let's pause for a second and consider how this story could be told differently. Same facts, different spin. A senator named Rafael Cruz is having dinner with his wife at a restaurant in Washington. A group of screaming, predominantly white political activists surround the couple and yell at them until they leave the building. That actually happened, as you just saw. But let's say this hypothetical Rafael Cruz was a liberal Democrat and not a Republican from Texas. You think Don Lemon and his fellow CNN anchors would describe that as a legitimate, constitutionally protected protest? Or could possibly the word mob come up and white supremacy and Nazi? What do you think about that? This is not the first time, though, we've seen this variety of dishonesty. It was also Don Lemon, amazingly, who just last August came rushing to the defense of that emerging Democratic constituency, Antifa. It says it right in the name, Antifa, anti-fascism, which is what they were there um, fighting. Listen, there's, you know, no organization is perfect. There was some violence. Um, no one condones the violence, but there were different reasons for Antifa and for these neo-Nazis uh, to be there. One, racist fascists. The other group, fighting racist fascists. There is a fascist. There's a distinction there. Yeah, Dumbo. Anti-fascist, it's in the name. There's a distinction there. Just as there was a distinction in Ferguson and Baltimore and Charlotte and every other city that's gone up in flames in the past 10 years. A riot was not a riot, it was a protest. Looting wasn't looting, it was undocumented shopping. And what you're hearing on cable news isn't news, it's lying. At least Eric Holder is brave enough to speak the truth without euphemism. Holder isn't some dopey CNN anchor taking orders from his superiors. He's the former attorney general of the United States, the country's chief law enforcement officer. Holder doesn't need to pretend that a mob isn't a mob. He's running for president as a Democrat. His job is to assemble mobs and send them out on behalf of the Democratic Party. And that's exactly what he did today. Watch this. 
Michelle says that, you know, when they go low, we go high. No. No. When they go low, we kick them. Kick them! Yay, yells the mob. Why not shoot them or burn them? Good question. Why not? The former attorney general has given his permission to get physical. Don't be surprised when they obey. Robert Petito is an attorney and a radio show host. He joins us tonight on the set. Robert, thanks a lot for coming on. Thanks for having me, Tucker. So kick them. Kick them, says the former chief law enforcement officer of the United States. What am I to make of that? Well, you're to make it. He's a desperate person running for president in 2020 who doesn't have a very good chance of winning. I think that instead of us concentrating so much on these radical statements of people on the far, far fringes of the political society, let's look at the 90 percent of the people in the middle of American politics who aren't interested in Antifa, who aren't interested in rioting or mobbing or looting, but want better schools, who want better health care, who want better Amen. education, and who want a political system that works. This is the response to Trump, where Democrats feel they need to get more muscular. They need to fight back. They want a, a boxer and there's a box with Trump. What we really need is somebody who, as George Bush said, is a uniter, not a divider. Well, I actually, and that can come I couldn't from the agree with you more. And that 90 percent who thinks that all this is a distraction from the core issues, which are mostly economic, um, is the people we're trying to appeal to at this show. So I agree with you completely. I disagree when you describe Eric Holder, the former attorney general of the United States, long serving, as a fringe political character. He's at the very center of our establishment. He lived in my neighborhood. He's the former attorney general. I mean, this is not some Octavio Cortez woman from Brooklyn. This is Eric Holder. Well, look, what we saw during the Senate hearings were uh, senators who wanted to make a name for themselves and get attention leading into the 2020 race. We see Eric Holder making statements trying to get into the 2020 race. We see Michael Avenatti running around everywhere to get into the 2020 race. Instead of these, uh, what I call fringe candidates, let's look at people who have actual pl plans, who have actual policy proposals that are going to help middle class people. You live in a, I agree. You, you live in a neighborhood with Eric Holder. I live in Georgia where we don't really have these far people. You grow up together. You watch SEC football. You go hunting. You go fishing. You drink beer. And you end up on different sides of the political aisle, but you have places in the middle where you agree. The, the hard problem is we take the most far left person and the most far right person and say that they represent the most Americans. I, 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 I literally couldn't, and I'm not, I'm surprised I'm saying I could not agree with you more. My concern is that we're entering a vortex where you do have people encouraging violence. Again, the former attorney general just did on camera. And once that begins, it becomes almost impossible for people to think clearly. I mean, if people are getting radical, surrounding people and making them leave restaurants is, that's, I've never seen anything like that in 49 years here. Well, well I think what you have to do is start having conversations across enemy lines, quote unquote. You know, I, I've been- Wait, but hold on, can't we, I, I, of course, I, again, I couldn't agree more with you, but shouldn't someone who has moral authority in the eyes of people who pay attention to politics, how about Barack Obama, who employed this guy for years, stand up and say, kick people, what, no? Well, Stop that well, he, talk. Well, what he, is this? He even quoted Michelle Obama, who gave us the clear instructions, which is when they go low, you go high. I would also like Wait, to, so where are well, they to do so? I think well, it's that, a fair that, question. That where, where, are they, where are the that Obamas is where, That is where the majority of voters are at. Nobody, most of voters don't want to be out here fighting random Nazis I, and I Antifas, agree but, completely. But also, you have to have President Trump giving leadership on this, not saying drag that SOB off the field, knock him in the head, or whatever else he wants to say. Let's have I, a I, civil conversation I, on both sides. I couldn't sides. agree more, and I hate that kind of talk no matter who it comes from. But in this case, right now, you just had the clearest possible example of it, and you have also a clear solution. So I didn't care for President Obama's policies at all. I think, thought they hurt the country. But personally, he is revered by a lot of Americans to this day, and so is his wife. They could stand up and say, we like Eric Holder, but we just want to be totally clear that violence is never an acceptable option in the United States as a way to express political differences. And that might prevent what I see coming and you see coming too, which is something truly awful being spurred on by people like that. Well, you know, if you look at the history of 19th century Europe, yeah. leading up to World War One, what you saw this same sort of political rhetoric, ethnicism, yes. nationalism, people retreating into their corners, demonizing the people on the other side of the argument. Instead of doing that, I think right now the, the uh, former president and former first lady don't want to be seen as if they're putting their thumb on the scale in favor of any but candidate who might run. Well, I mean, come on, look, but look, you'll, you'll see a rejection of that from the voters when the early primary states maybe, come out and you end up with 1% of the maybe, vote. And I hope you're right. I think the Democrats are really hurting themselves. If they just made a middle class economic argument, they would rule forever. Anyone who does that wins. That hasn't occurred apparently. 
but why not just let's just stop this before it goes where we all know it's going which is into crazy town well, well, well like I said what people have to do is start going into the outside of the echo chamber don't just campaign to people who like you don't just talk right. to groups that uh, agree right. with you I, look, Tucker let's take this show and go do it at a HBCU or let's go do it I, and you know look, I, in, uh, in the middle this of Chicago is the, and we'll literally talk the about it. only show I'm aware of in all of television that invites people on to make a counter case. I don't think there is another show. I believe in that as a core belief, and I mean it. Obviously, I mean it. I just, I'm worried that we're moving toward violence, and that's the worst thing always. All right, well, I think what we have to do is yep. start having these conversations where people can agree on the things they agree on okay. and handle I'm, those first. I'm for that. Well, I agree with you on that. Robert Cotillo, thank you very much. Thanks, Good to see you. Dana Lash is a radio show host, and she joins us tonight. Are you as worried as I am about where this is going? No, Tucker, good to be with you. I am. I'm, I share the exact same concerns as you do, and I actually agreed a lot with your guest as well. It does seem that common ground is really difficult to be found lately, and any attempt to find any common ground is immediately attacked by those fringes. The thing, though, that I keep hearing so much, so often from individuals who are on the left as a way to try to justify this, they, they position their defense of Antifa or some of these mobs, and that's what they were, mobs chasing the cruises, out of a restaurant and mobs that are doxing Republican senators and their families. They're mobs chasing people like Senator McConnell in an airport. They keep saying, well, you know, Trump says this or Trump says that, which I think we all agree we, we need to be able to have civil, nuanced conversation. Right. But to think that this started with the administration is a really silly argument because I can remember during the Tea Party rallies when we would be, you know, anywhere in the country with, you know, people that are bringing portable coolers full of juice boxes and they're bringing lawn chairs and we were all completely derided we had our characters impugned we were called every name in the book this didn't start with the trump administration no it didn't and yet we're we're at a, a new place a place that i don't think we've we've been in 50 years anyway at least where we're on the cusp of something horrible there are still widely respected people in this country i don't see my job as ginning up partisan rage and getting people to act out in violence. That's a totally irresponsible thing to do. Where are the people on the left who are making that? I mean, there are responsible people on the left. Why are they so cowardly they can't speak up now? Well, and, and true, and I think Heidi Heitkamp is one of those. She condemned Hillary Clinton's remarks when Hillary Clinton said, essentially, that they're not going to be civil so long as they don't have power. But there needs to be more like Heidi Heitkamp. But at the same time, though, you know, I kind of wonder if it isn't too late. I, I sincerely, genuinely hope it's not. I hope we can get Me back too. to a place where we can exchange ideas. But I really feel like, you know, you called them the other night, Tucker, you called them, uh, these individuals out there, the Antifa and what we saw in Portland, shock troops. And I thought that was a great way to put it because normally it's always been the party establishment the leadership that has sort of jerked on the leash of the shock troops they right. use them to get voter turnout it's a tactic we see this every election you're right but don't you think it's kind of going the other way now the shock troops are sort totally. of jerking the leash oh, of the oh, Democratic totally. establishment. And this is what always happens the revolution get, you think you're using the energy of the crazies to achieve your goals and you wake up one morning the crazies are actually defining your agenda for you they're in charge it's it's always the same Dana, right. thank you. Thank you right. for that. Good, Good to, to see, see you. you, Tucker. Thank you. Well, I tell you